question for the men, what's the worst part of having a penis? I spend all my adolescence telling it to sit the fuck down, not here. Then finally I reach an age where I'm like alright, your time to shine bro, and that this petty motherfucker has the audacity to not do the very thing he'd been annoying me by doing at random times for so many years. Honestly rude. Random boners during puberty. I know it's a trope, but having to walk around while you have a throbbing erection is not great. Best is when I had decided not to change after gym class one time. I was sitting in band class two periods later and a raging boner manifested beneath the thin veneer of my mesh gym shorts, because of the extremely hot girl playing the saxophone a few seats down from me. I definitely have an oral fixation of sorts, cause watching her constantly suck on the mouthpiece must have made me horny as hell. She even caught me staring on prior occasions. Any case, I kept having to use the bell of my trombone to cover my unit on that particular occasion. That girl was practically a snake charmer with that thing. You can shake it, you can beat it, you can hit it on the wall. But until you put it in your pants the last drop never falls. When you're like I'll stand up to pee in the toilet and the pee stream decides to fork into two unconceivable directions and the only way to get either in the toilet is for one to shoot across the room and get on the floor or run down your leg. When you're like I'll sit down to pee and somehow your dick is at some weird angle and manages to shoot the pee right between the bowl and the seat and you end up pissing on the floor in your own pants. And for me, when I'm under anesthesia and get an erection. Doing the helicopter motion when you have a bad back isn't possible. Basically zero control over it. Big? Not your choice. Small? Not your choice. Weird looking? Not your choice. Hard when it shouldn't be? Not your choice. Soft when it shouldn't be? Not your choice. Edit. Pro tip for unwanted boners though, since it's blood flow related, flexing your largest muscle groups, usually legs, will divert flow enough to speed up the softening process. Women complain about men not being able to aim their pee into the toilet. What we aren't telling you is that any man who has ever taken a piss barefooted knows that even with perfect aim, you can feel the droplets hitting your feet and shins. Nothing and nowhere is safe. Maybe not the worst, but one I haven't seen yet in this third. Sometimes when biking, it falls asleep, kinda like when you stay in the same position for too long, you get that tingly feeling? Really unpleasant when it happens in a body part that's so sensible. It goes away after a few minutes, but it has definitely gotten me some weird looks. When the skin gets pulled back and touches something dry, like underwear. I'd imagine that's what touching a cactus feels like. Having to pee at stadiums. I don't care what anyone says, I hate standing inches from two guys I don't know while we all urinate with a horde of dudes watching us. Just getting boners man. You can't avoid it. You can't just get rid of it. You just get boners. It doesn't have to be fueled by anything. The fact that your second head can also have a mind of its own sometimes. Not always obedient to what you want it to do, ha. Huh? Doing the deep crouch, the left leg stretch, the pocket rearrange, the cowboy walk, sit in leg left, then the sit in leg right, tuck the underwater up in there, god that you can't fix it no matter what in the car. Having to piss with morning wood. Glue leg on hot days. Balls will stick to your thigh. If for some reason a guy just starts walking like a cartoon cowboy out of nowhere, you know what he's doing. Edit. Okay guys I get it. Gold bond and underwear with sack hammocks. As a shower, as opposed to a grower, I was going out with my girlfriend for six years before we went for a swim in a cold lake. When we got out, and I was changing, she looked down at my crotch in shock and asked what happened in a horrified way. She genuinely thought that the whole I was in the pool thing was an excuse used only by guys trying to pretend their dicks are bigger than they are. She brought this up with her friends later and they all thought the same. So, in my anecdotal experience, no, women do not know about shrinkage. It's really the balls. They're more easily hurt. They're somehow always sweaty, 
they're the part that produces the things that make babies, had to have that surgically disconnected. The penis is great. It's the balls that suck. We truly have no control over our erections. I've had it fail me when with an incredibly attractive partner, and having someone blame themselves, like, they internalize you must not be attracted to them or something, is so disappointing. Also all the side things, like how you have to intentionally avoid feeling good during sex because you might orgasm too quickly, instead of just being able to enjoy it. It's frustrating. Level 2. Quamispuous. Five days ago. I had a crush on my neighbor my entire childhood. She was beautiful but into older guys as we grew up. She moved but we kept in touch via social media. One night I was clubbing and ran into her. She was rolling, on ecstasy, and was overly excited to see me. We start hanging out, my friends and hers, and she's like open your mouth. She puts a molly on my tongue and off we went. We connected caught up, the usual on it, and she wanted to go home with me. Inner child was overwhelmed with excitement, and it wasn't the molly. We go home. The seventeen years of build-up and my dick didn't arrive to the moment. It was the most anticlimactic situation I've ever been in and home she went. I still think about that and how fickle it can be. Gah.